I'm Aubrey Sitterson, and this is Skull. You're listening to the only story that matters. This is true oral storytelling. I write every episode myself, and then, like the Scandinavian bards known as Skalds, I perform everything in one single flawless take. This is the best episode yet, so don't worry about not starting at the beginning. Afterward, you can always go back to listen to previous episodes of the podcast for free, or buy the prose volumes on Amazon for only $2.99. This isn't me reading you a story. This is me telling you a story. This is Scald, Part 61. They had been stunned into silence, and they stood there, transfixed, until a single, crass guffaw broke the spell. A rambunctious chortle that was far from befitting the royal personage from which it emanated. But she couldn't help herself. The queen, the queen of the pharaoh, was overtaken with mirth at the absurdity of Maul's accusation. Grathana? Really? The queen of the pharaoh wiped the tears from her eyes. How old do you think I am? Maul, like the rest of that crowded room, stood silent, struggling and failing to force the pieces of his shattered mind back into place. He knew that time had passed. Patro had told him that. Though he didn't believe it at first, a hundred years had passed since he last set foot in that barrier realm. But this, this queen, this tall, noble, regal figure, he saw something of himself in her. He saw his royal lineage coursing through her blood. She was his kin. He knew it. There was also something else. Something. Fay. Before Maul could speak, before he could question this woman, this relative of his, his stunted, limping thoughts were interrupted by someone from his more recent past. What is he doing here? Calaria. That fiery sorceress kept one eye on Maul as she turned to face her patron, the man who had taken her under his wing. You told me he was held captive, that one day I could be the one to kill him, that I could put him down like the rabid dog that he is. Heno had a difficult decision to make. The wild rumblings beneath the city continued unabated causing even the tower itself to start swaying erratically. His magics were weakening. His city was falling. He needed to regain control. He needed to take control. But there, before him, before his very eyes, the sorceress, that stunningly powerful creature, the one he had fought so hard to rein in and break, to repurpose to fit his goals. She stood there, waving her hands, summoning up the power within her, summoning up the flame and the darkness, the one that waited, grinning, ready to devour them all. A single spell, she could ruin everything. She could destroy everything. She could unleash the fire that turned everything. This meeting, his tower, Ravenna, the border realm, the entirety of the sundered worlds, the cathartic burn that would turn it all to flames and ashes. No, she had to be stopped. So Heno relented. He made the only choice he could. He chose to abandon his trance, to abandon his failing efforts to shore up the magics of his city, of Ravenna. He spoke to his protege. 
patience, Galeria. He reached out quickly, adroitly, and touched three fingers to Calaria's temple. He had to get control quickly. A broken tool does no work. Mole watched warily, cautiously, as Calaria, that weak, fragile witch, gave in to a magic greater than her own, watched as she put up a paltry fight and did exactly that which all cowards do. She obeyed. He saw Calaria. He saw that scoundrel Heno, and he saw the battle-hardened Farah standing at the ready. But still, he had eyes on only one figure. Fair and Queen, the one who had regained her composure, replacing her forceful, condescending laugh with a scowl that Maul could feel was identical to his own. No, I know you. I know you! Maul, confused and furious, waved his long, black spear wildly, a motion to which the Farron warriors responded in kind, unsheathing swords, knocking arrows, and leveling spears of their own. I know that face. You, you're Grathana, my sister. I know it. The queen signaled to her warriors directing them to lower their weapons. At ease. The day I can't handle a simpleton brute myself is the day you should remove me from my throne. She sneered at Maul. You are every bit as foul, stupid, and violent as she said that you were. Maul, in a fit of anger, smashed the butt of his spear down upon the ground, loosening additional stones from the still-shaking walls. Silence! Speak plainly! I would know who you are, who you are to address the one true king of men! As Maul stood clutching his spear, his knuckles turning white from the pressure, a bold voice spoke up from behind the warriors, a voice that exuded confidence even as it trembled from the ravages of age. She is a queen, you fool. Reluctantly, the fair parted, shoved aside by a pair of hands that, while small and withered, still held a shocking degree of power over the warriors. And there, hobbling out into the open, no longer protected by her honor guard, was a severe-looking woman, leaning on an ancient staff of living wood, one that blossomed and grew fruit even as Maul gazed upon it. She is my granddaughter. The old woman, the human woman, allowed a smile to cross her lips. And she is your grandniece. Maul clutched his eyes shut and shook his head, hoping that when he opened them, his eyes would gaze upon a scene that made sense to him. But to no avail, he looked back at the still scowling queen of the Pharaoh saw a familiar sense of royalty, of power, but he also saw something else, something fey, something he recognized. Those pointed ears, that unmistakable brow. He turned back to Grathana, to his now ancient younger sister, and pointed that long, dread spear directly at her, his voice dripping. With disgust. You, you traitor. Have you no pride? Don't you know who you are? You and foreign? Despite their best efforts to maintain their renowned sense of stoicism, 
despite the fact that the tower they stood in, that the city it was located in, was crumbling to rubble, some members of Grithana's guard began to chuckle. Grinning, Grithana spoke once again. My gods, no, he was old when you met him. No, Maul, I married Foran's son. And this, she pointed proudly at the queen, this is my granddaughter, Foran's great-granddaughter, the first Farron monarch of royal blood, both human and elven, Queen Rashka. Maul didn't understand, but he did know this. He didn't need to understand. He didn't even want to understand. All he wanted to do was to get what was his. His cudgel, his horn, his throne, and his realm. He wanted what he always wanted. What he had always wanted. He wanted what was his. And he wished to see everything else burnt to cinders. I'm not interested in your corrupt lineage and the desecration of our once proud line. Maul, realizing the tenuousness of his position, began to look around, baring his teeth at anyone with the temerity to gaze upon him. What are you doing here? Why are you here? Maul had barely finished growling when he received his response. But it came not from the proud Queen Roshka, from the ancient Grithana, or any of the Farron warriors. No, the response came from another ruler, a self-made king. They are here for the same reason that you are. Heno with a flourish of his robes, produced seemingly from nowhere a pair of artifacts. A notched, blood-stained, blackened club, and a long, twisting, alabaster horn. They want something from me. He had to fight every inch of his body, because every piece of his being wanted to launch him forward, to lunge for the cudgel and for the horn, to take back what was rightfully his. But Heno was still too far away. The Farron warriors were still too close, and perhaps most significantly, Hilaria still lurked nearby, calmed only slightly by Heno's magics, moving her hands in slow, deliberate Arcane patterns. Those, they're mine. They're mine by right. Hanno chuckled as he disappeared the cudgel and the horn back into his robes. I don't doubt it. You're not wrong, of course. The only trouble is... The Wizard King's expression soured. You have nothing to offer me. Maul kicked the proctor at his feet. The gasping, rapidly fading boy with the massive, sucking wound in his chest. Here, your son. I rescued him. I would have what is mine. Heno, heedless of Maul and his long, black, dread spear, crouched down next to his son. You offer me a dying boy? You offer me a life that has already slipped through your fingers? The Wizard King frowned and shook his head, a hint of regret creeping across his face. This what you fail to understand, my king. The only thing that is yours is that which you already hold. Heno reached down and placed his hand over his son's face, 
covering his gasping mouth and pinching his nostrils shut. And sometimes, not even that. Maul, too furious to be shocked by the mercy killing he just witnessed, by the lack of hesitation as Heno meted out death to his son. He pointed his spear once again at the queen of the pharaoh, Queen Rashka. Oh, what do they have to offer you? Anything they have, I will take, and then it shall be mine. What can they trade with? Trees? Grass? What could they possibly have that you want? Once again, Maul's questions were answered from an unexpected direction. Me. It was Grithana, hobbling forward, leaning heavily on her living staff. He wants me. You. What would he want with you? As Maul spoke, the confusion washed over the shattered landscape of his psyche. The same thing he wants with you, my king. Now, finally, Patro emerged from the hallway, striding proudly into his brother's chambers, observing the effects of his plan. He wants the heirs to the throne. The only living heirs, the last heirs, to the kingdom of men. Maul stammered, his confusion not abating. But, but why? Insurance, consolidation, a calculated bet. Heno rose slowly leaving the corpse of his son lying on the floor. Ravenna must expand. Ravenna will expand, and I will not have my rule questioned. The wizard king turned to his brother, snarling. Do you hear me, Patro? You will not undermine me, even with this brute in your thrall. Finally, Maul understood. Understood enough to speak up. I am in no one's thrall. I am a king. I am the one true king. The one true king of men. Yes, yes, of course. And I walked back slowly, putting some distance between himself and that savage oaf. What did he tell you? Let me guess. I bet he told you that this was something beyond. Just a sibling power struggle. A revolt, right? A slave revolt. A righteous uprising. Am I wrong? Patro moved confidently forward. None of your tricks, Hanno. He knows about what you've done to this city. What you've done to its people. And a roared, the gas lamps in the room flaring as his anger did the same. What I've done? What I've done is improve this city. I've liberated its people. Patro spat back. Liberated them through slavery? Through opportunity. The brothers, fueled by anger, hatred, arrogance, and jealousy, began to grow in stature, vitality returning to their ancient, withered frames. You would have us return to your rule, where none could excel, where none could rise up, where no one was elevated. Patro retorted, where no one was enslaved, 
You had your turn, and now it is mine. It is my turn to rule. Hanno cackled. Your turn? You would speak to me of whose turn it is? You refuse to hand over the rule. You refuse to give up your rigid hierarchy, your caste system. Because it was better. It was more stable. I knew you would dismantle it. And for what? For your creature comforts? To feel strong? To feel powerful? You mask servitude and false stability, and you call it safety. You cloak slavery and empty choices, and you call it freedom. Suddenly, Maul had heard enough. He had had enough. He smashed the butt of his spear on the ground once again and spoke in a voice like thunder, one that harmonized strangely with the ongoing rumblings from the earth below. Silence! Both of you! Maul began to stalk toward Hanno. I don't care who rules this cesspool. I don't care who lives in towers and who lives in chains. I don't care about any of it. Maul raised his spear, that long, black, fell weapon, and he spoke slowly, a wicked grin creeping across his face. I care about taking back what is mine, that which you hold. I care about taking back the life that you stole, the life you ripped away from me by sending us, by sending her to that broken world. Maul bit his lip to keep from crying and spoke his intentions through clenched teeth. You killed Skog. I will make you pay. Enno stared at Maul, baffled. Me? It was your master, Patro, that banished you to that world. But it was you that sent me to him, sent me on your fool's errand, and now I will have my revenge. I will have Skog's revenge. Suddenly, the room filled with a peal of laughter. Is that what this is about? Is that what you're claiming this is about? Maul turned his gaze to the source of that laughter, turned his gaze to the sorceress, Calaria. Keep talking, witch. Use what's left of your breath before I... Beat it out of your body. Don't think I've forgotten what you and your monk cost me. Calaria began to move toward Maul, began to move her hands faster, tracing sigils that scalded the air she wrote them in. You don't care about the cat. You never did. You didn't care about the cat, and you certainly didn't care about Xylan. You don't care about anything. You don't even care about your throne. Calaria's voice took on an unnatural tone as she spoke, her eyes filling with darkened flame. They are just more excuses, just more what I'm sure are a litany of False grievances, a pitiful inventory of your trumped-up suffering, a list of excuses for the violence that you would mete out regardless. Maul felt the murderous rage overtake him. I don't need an excuse. I need no excuse. You know nothing of my suffering. You know nothing of what I've been through. I deserve to see this world burn. For what I've suffered, I deserve to see all the worlds burn. And they are mine. They are mine to burn. As he spoke, Maul felt the woad blue of his tattoos, felt them sting his skin as they crawled into ever new positions. He felt his care for the world around him, 
His care for his very life felt it evaporate, crumble, and blow away in the wind as the fury and hate pushed out everything else. He wished to drive his spear at the witch, wished to feel the pangs of ecstasy as that black stone head split her ribcage. He wished to leave the spear there, a warning to all those who would cross him, who would defy him, who would make light of his suffering, of his quest, of what he had been through, of where he deserved to be. And he wished to then launch himself at the old wizard, and Hanno wished to squeeze the life out of him with his bare hands, then search his withered body for what he was owed, for that which was his. But he did not. Because though the anger filled him, though it consumed him and animated him, Maul could clearly see the symbols that Calaria traced in the air. He could feel the heat they gave off, that hungry flame, that cathartic blaze, and worst of all, he recognized the darkened flames in her eyes, the ones that he had fallen into before, the ones that still left their scars on his broken mind. But they all stood ever so briefly in a standoff. Maul, Hilaria, Patro, Heno, Grithana, Rashka, and the rest of the Pharaoh, waiting with clenched teeth, scowling, all of them coveting that which was theirs and resenting those who held it. But before that pregnant moment could give birth to the unrestrained, bloody violence that lurked beneath the surface, the wizard king Heno cried out, in agony. With his hands squeezing his temples, he stumbled back to his throne, where he collapsed, panting and trying desperately to re-enter his trance, to shore up the magics that continued to crumble and fade, the ones that had guided and protected his dying city. Valeria turned to him, momentarily distracted from the savage brute she wished so desperately to see burn. Hanno, what's wrong? Hanno, eyes clenched shut, hands gripping the arms of his throne, spoke haltingly. The buildings collapsed, the circles broken, the wards, useless. Calaria, panicked, went to him, went to the man who had guided her development as he guided Ravana's own, the man who promised her that the city would one day be hers. What's happened? Tell me. Slowly, Hanno looked up. The color drained from his face. The light sucked from his eyes. The life purged from his voice. His entire presence defined solely by one emotion. Terror. They're here. The high elves. I know you're digging Scald, so please help the show out by leaving me a review on iTunes. If you leave a good one, I'll read it right here. Blurgendor says this about Scald. Mind-blowing podcast. This is an epic adventure told expertly in the almost forgotten style of the Scald. I'm hooked on it. Check it out, my friends. You will not be disappointed. Scald is totally free, and that's not going to change. But right now, you have an opportunity to become more than just a fan. You can become a patron. 
And this is an opportunity, not an obligation. Because if you love something, if you enjoy having it waiting for you each and every week, why wouldn't you want to pay for it? Why wouldn't you want the great feeling of knowing that you're supporting something awesome? If you think four episodes of Scald each and every month is worth something more than zero, head to patreon.com slash scald and sign up today. Please talk about Scald on social media and make sure to tag me so I can share your posts. I'm Aubrey Sitterson on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, and Snapchat. And I am shameless. I share all compliments and all positive reviews. So keep them coming. You can also hit up AubreySitterson.com for links to everything, including Scald, my wrestling talk show Straight Shoot, my comics work, bio, contact information, and more. I don't play a lot of video games. Part of it is not having the time, but also I increasingly find that modern video games require a ton of time, a ton of buy-in, and a lot of sitting around watching boring cutscenes with bad dialogue. But you know what game never has that problem? Grow Force. It's an over-the-top, frenetic, 2D, side-scrolling platformer that's also a love letter to big, crazy, explosive action cinema. I'm playing it on PS4, but you can and should also get it for your desktop computer. Get in there, bro. Thanks for listening. I'll talk at you next week.